chapter uh, 6, if, if anyone's caught in a sin. What if you're caught? What if you have an addiction? You, you don't have the will to say no. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? you be willing to be accountable. You have to admit to God. Here you go. What does it take for God to make an impure heart clean? I think this is what I've done. I'll, I'll let you in on it what I've done in my life that does not work. I want God to clean my heart, but I'm wanting him to do it my way. My way doesn't involve Jeff coming into the deep place of my life and me being that close to somebody in those areas. My way doesn't mean that I... My way is that I want to do it privately with God over here. That's my way. My way is a more private way. I go back to the passage way back when. Remember when Abraham got the revelation? It was, it was, the, it was this revelation of circumcision. God needed to circumcise. And what is circumcision? Cutting, Cutting away of the what? The flesh. You can't circumcise yourself. Somebody else has to circumcise you. You don't circum... We want to circumcise ourselves in Jesus' name. <laughs> We want to cut away the fleshly parts of our life in Jesus' name. But we need to allow other people into the very private areas of our life, into the very fleshly private areas of our life, and have them take the scalpel because it's going to hurt. And that's what God does. That's what it means. That's not my way. How does God... What does, God, what does it take for God to make an impure heart clean? Everything that's not my way. Because <laughs> I think most of us want God to clean us and to help us, but we have a caveat. I want to do it this way. I want to do it by reading a book. I want to do it by understanding this. I want to do it by this. I want to do it by this. No. We still haven't surrendered. Going back to here, we still haven't surrendered. Yet. How do we maintain a pure heart? The same way. No different. I'd like to tell you there's another story. <laughs> same story. I like the gospel. It's pure. It's not very, very complicated. Child should understand it. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? But I, the Lord, search the hearts and examine the secret motives. God understands. That's how bad it is. That's why we can't do it for ourselves. Because we will turn it around in weird ways in our head and never get any, never, never, we'll never be able to go on. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Becoming a pure heart. You've got to see it. And you've got to want it. There's no other way. But how do you become pure of heart? You've got to see it. You've got to see it. And you've got to want it. Ask God to do this. John Ortberg. I've heard him speak before. He's, he's quite a good speaker. He's a pastor out in California. He says, many years ago, early in our marriage, my wife and I sold our Volkswagen Beetle to buy our first really nice piece of furniture. It was a sofa. It was a pink sofa. But for that kind of money, it was called 
a mob sofa. The man at the sofa store told us about how to take care of it. It was delivered. It was beautiful. We had very small children in those days. And does anybody want to guess what the number one rule in our house from that day on was? Don't sit on the mob sofa. Don't play near the mob sofa. Don't eat around the mob sofa. Don't touch the mob sofa. Don't breathe on the mob sofa. Don't think about the mob sofa. On every other chair in the house, you may freely sit, but on the mob sofa, you may not sit. For on the day you sit thereon, you shall surely die. <laughs> And then one day came the fall. There appeared on the mob sofa a stain. A red stain. A red jelly stain. My wife called the man at the sofa factory and he told her how bad it was. So she assembled our three children to look at the stain of the sofa. And Laura, who then was about four, and Mallory, who was two and a half, and Johnny, who was maybe six months. She said, children, do you see that? That's a stain. That's a red stain. That's a red jelly stain. And the man at the sofa store says it's not coming out, not for all eternity. <laughs> Do you know how long eternity is, children? Eternity is how long we're all going to sit here until one of you tells me which one of you put the jelly stain on the mob sofa. For a long time, they just sat there until finally Mallory cracked. John says, I knew she would. She said, Laura did it. <laughs> Laura said, no, I didn't. Then it was dead silence for the longest time. I knew that none of them would confess putting the stain on the sofa because they had never seen their mom that mad in their lives. I knew that none of them was going to confess putting the stain on the sofa because they knew if they did, they would spend all eternity in the timeout chair. <laughs> And I knew that none of them would confess putting the stain on the sofa because, in fact, I was the one who put the stain on the sofa. <laughs> and I wasn't saying anything, not a word. <laughs> we all put stains on the sofa is, is the moral of the story. If we own up to our sins, we have all sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God, right? We all have sinned. We all have put stains on the sofa and we can't get it out. And we don't know how to get it out. And we'll never be able to get it out. We can scrub all we want to. We can cover it. We can do this. We can justify. We can say this. We can... No! But if we own up to our sins, if we own up to our life, if we take ownership of who we are. Not to say things, but in our hearts say, I got a problem. God, I need you. God. It's facing God and it's believing in your heart. You know it. We own up to our sins. God shows that He's faithful and just by forgiving us our sins and purifying us from the pollution of all the bad things we've done. Purify. So you've got to see it and you've got to want it and you've got to go to the only one that can clean it. That's how you get pure. How often do you do this? Run! Run to him! Don't let things build up. Then you gotta bring out Roto River. <laughs> That's when all the elders of the church have to come and Route it out in Jesus' name. I mean, 
You need troops in there to get the stuff all clogged cl because it's been clogged for years. Things ain't right. It's terrible. It's stinky. We all don't like it. You gotta see, you gotta want it, you gotta go to the one that can clean it. Two, get refocused. How do we get a pure heart? We have to admit we're out of focus. We're going the wrong direction. Adultery is a double minded. There's a division in the heart. And you know what a division is? More than one vision. We're out of focus. All those who focus their hopes on Him. We're out of focus. We're not going after God. All those. Say all those. All How, who does that mean? Everybody but me? Yeah, that means, that means you too. All y'all. All those who focus their hopes on Him and His coming seek to purify themselves. All those. You will seek to purify yourself. Just as he is pure. This will happen. This, if you're not into seeking to purify yourself, your focus is off. And then, since you notice your focus is off, go back to this one. This is the one that you always do. Right? Three, having pure of heart, submitting your heart to the truth. Somewhere along the line, there is a lie that has gotten in that we believe deep in our hearts. I don't like talk to men because all men are. There are some women that feel stuff about men. There are some women that feel stuff about some men that feel stuff about women in weird ways. We all have weird judgments that have nothing to do with the truth, but we need to submit our hearts to the truth if we plan to change. Ask God to reveal the lies of your heart. The lies that keep you in bondage. The truth will set us free. Deception and lies will keep us in bondage. Know that you have taken care to purify your souls through submission to the truth. You can express real love Number four, humbly asking God to purify your heart. We've been doing this prayer. Pray thing is a, is a big deal because you and I can't do this. Create in me a new and a clean heart, O oh God. Fill me with clean thoughts. And right desires. Number five, realize your choices can help you or hinder you. You have choices. We have a heart the way it is because of certain choices. Learn how to take charge over your own body. Maintain purity and honor. No, you know what? Look, I like that. You can maintain purity. You can't get purity. tells the story about a child who experienced playing muddy football. After a huge downpour, he and his neighborhood buddies found a gully filled with two inches of standing water. Howerton describes what happened next. We had a blast. Every tackle 
would send you sliding for yards and yards, and the ball was like a greased pig, which meant tons of fumbles and gang tackles and lack. I remember tackling one of my friends, Jimmy, and watched him skim across the surface of the water for something like four miles and thinking, I might be in heaven. When he got up, I noticed something stuck on his shoulder. It's right there. I peered closer and said, what is that? Now, there was a huge concrete sewage runoff drain right next to the gully. Mm. And apparently, during heavy rains, all sorts of things got backed up. And I didn't know if the apartment complex immediately next to the school burst a pipe or what. But I do know we didn't really pay attention to the fought sand in the gully until I noticed that something on Jimmy's shoulder. I peered closer and suddenly realized it was a soaking piece of toilet paper. In that same instant, I realized the smell surrounding me was a bit more pungent than a typical mud football game ought to smell. And I yelled out, we're playing in poop water! <laughs> and we bolted for home as fast as we could. <laughs> Talk about an instant mental transformation. Something in life. Sometimes in life, we need our thinking transformed. Sometimes we think we're having fun until we realize we're rolling around in sewage. And you and I have areas in our life where we're rolling around in sewage, but we don't see it. We're thinking we're having the time of our life. God, would you, would you be so gracious? And open her eyes like, like you open Mike's eyes to see on Jimmy. There's a problem. Open our eyes and would you help us to be open to the eyes of our brother and sister to see the mess we're in. And to give us a hand to get out and we would run home. Lord, make my life a window for your light to shine through and the mirror to reflect your love. Gracious, what a picture to be left with. <laughs> <laughs> Are we meeting for 